Oh boy, what the year have we had? We've had an interesting year, that's for sure, especially Huge. when it comes to our own wallets. Yes, this episode of TFL Talking Trucks podcast is all about TFL Truck, TFL Studios, and the pickup trucks we actually bought and or sold within this year. That is correct, Mundo, and that means that some of these vehicles are still around and will still be around Oh, sometime well into next year. But this is an opportunity for you and I to discuss each truck specifically. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that true? Is that real? Yeah, you should see uh, how many cars uh, we had too. <laughs> so there's a separate podcast uh, on the Car Talking Channel. And yeah. uh, that one has even more vehicles, including the ones that some of us have actually owned. Yes, so this is not, we're not talking about my Chevy Colorado right, right now. And we're not talking about your Santa Cruz That's right now. Correct. We're talking about our experiences and our thoughts. So we buy vehicles for one huge reason. We want to spend a lot of time with them, not just a week or two. Um, we want to live with them. We want to try to see what problems arise right. or not or don't come, arise. Um, and we buy lots of used vehicles and also brand new ones. We're trying to sort of create a balance, I guess you could say. And so in many cases, a lot of those used ones, uh, we do series with and or comparisons or both. And in many cases, those series will go into three or four different episodes or even five episodes showcasing the vehicle's capability, off-road capability, how much it costs to buy them, fix them up. And then of course we sell them off later. So yeah, so this is really like a holiday episode and really um, just talking about the long-term fleet. Yeah, we're bringing down 2023 with talking about some of the things we spent money on, and in many cases, too much money on. Yes. Um, so how about before we start, we need to thank some people, because we have some generous people here on Patreon. Yes, we do. So patreon.com slash TFLcar is you could, um, this is optional, completely, totally optional. But if you do have a question, or you're buying a vehicle, a pickup truck, and you want to talk to one of us. This is the best way to get our attention, and we'll answer you first. It's a good way to get in front of the line and get slightly preferential treatment because we will be talking about your comments or questions immediately. And in addition, you'll get direct responses from us. Yes. So we had three supporters that joined this week. Disc Boot Failure. I love that name. Uh, yeah, I knew you so uh, Disc, Disc Boot um, entered. Uh, then also Jeff Miller. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. And also William Wallace, is that correct? <laughs> William. Freedom! <laughs> wow, I didn't know he came back from the past. Uh, yeah, that's as I wonder if you do have a blue and a green. I'm sure you get a lot of this from a lot of the other people, William, so I apologize if it's yeah, sorry about that. taxing on you. But we really appreciate you. Yeah, we do. And also we had a couple of comments and questions. Um, so we recently did an off-road video, Alex and I. Mm -hmm. We were at Tumbleweed Ranch, which is a TFL uh, property there. And we compared the new Polaris Expedition side-by-side -side to our long-term Jeep Wrangler. Mm. Did you talk about the Wrangler in your other podcast? Yes, we did. Uh, podcast? Yes, yes. We did. So, and um, David, our friend David Morrow, he created a new obstacle in, uh, in Andre's Pit area, which is a little bit more challenging than most. Okay. And we didn't know what to name it. But Gary Sarat, Gary, uh, said, how about you name it Tater Hill? Okay. We do uh, we grow potatoes at the ranch? Or no. no. We. I mean, I, we should. We. I eat potatoes. I love potatoes. I grew up on potatoes. Roman looks like a potato. Yes, potato head. <laughs> yeah, he's got kind of a potato head. So that might be something. To look. We so, will definitely bring it up. So we'll to consider the this, trust. Gary. Yeah, absolutely, Gary. Thank you for that. I kind of like the name, but we don't really have potatoes at the at the ranch. No, but there could be other reasons why uh, to call it that. By the way, there is an obstacle. Uh, at, in Moab, Utah, called Potato Salad. And so yeah, that might be something for us to keep in mind as yeah, well. Yeah, we need to keep that in mind. Russet also, potato. I want to thank David Stubbs. Yes, yeah, so uh, our buddy David Stubbs is a longtime uh, backer, a supporter. Patreon supporter. And uh, he's had comments and questions before. And he recently uh, threw us a comment. I'm not going to go over all the details of it. It was more of a personal thing. But it was basically a sign of solidarity and support for what we're doing right here on this particular show. So uh, with our talking points and also, more importantly, 
what you guys like and dislike about yes. us. He was very supportive. And David, thank you very much. I still think your last name Stubbs is the coolest last name ever. And I'm thrilled to hear that you do rock out. So yes, because you need that. With so I think Dave wins the coolest name of the year. Award. Without a doubt. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's really great. Thank you, Dave. Um, and then also... We have a comment from Saeed, one another supporter, about the Cybertruck reservation. Um, I, actually, I want to thank a lot of you. Mm. So we've received at least maybe one message a day over the last week and a half plus two weeks since the Cybertruck was announced mm -hmm. of you guys, because we said we don't have a really low reservation number. Yeah. Our reservation number for Cybertruck is like something like 49,000. Way line. down there, yeah. So that's like a year or more down the line. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to really get our hands on the Cybertruck to test. Correct. And a lot of you are willing to give your reservations to us. We love that. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate. That's This is very hard to do because <laughs> just like Ford and GM with certain special vehicles, special edition vehicles, they're very protective, Tesla is, of those reservation holders and transfers. Yep. But we do have one in the works. So, Saeed, sorry, we already have one that we're working on. And thank you so much for your offer. It was very generous, and we do appreciate it. Yes. And if it's something falls through, we'll give you a call. There you go. So, I appreciate that. All right. Should we start with an interesting vehicle that we recently purchased? Yes. Yes. And I want to go on a little bit of a rant after we talk about it. Oh, and it's actually in this image behind me, which is this little white, tiny, tiny K truck pickup from Japan. That is correct. And that's the 1995 Honda Acti, uh, A-C-T-Y, for those of you who don't know. We purchased it for $6,200. Yeah, well, that sounds like a fair chunk of change. Mm. But, well, first of all, so this vehicle is over 25 years old, mm -hmm. which means it's importable, right. which this one is. And also, I was a little skeptical at first. I mean, I, yes, I've seen them on university campuses around the country and like stadiums. Mm -hmm. They're used like as little tiny utility vehicles in many places. Right. But, I, you know, I didn't know how easy it would be to drive. I didn't know, you know, how much they cost. I didn't know how, well, I didn't know much about it until I drove it. And what did you think? I, I loved it. I, I've... But, but, there is, but there is a caveat. Uh -huh. um, I'm almost six three yeah. feet tall. Yes. And first of all, it's right hand drive yes. from Japan, and I can get over that. That's not a problem. But once I get into it, the cab is so tiny. There's no way to pull the seat backwards, and my knees are hitting the blinker stock, and the windshield wa washer stock, and so as I drive, I'm either using my blinker with my knees. Or the windshield wipers with my knees. Right. Now, this thing has uh, a four-wheel drive system, and it is a manual transmission. So uh, it's it's truly all shades of awesome. Now, I got lucky enough years and years ago, before I was even an automotive journalist, so we're going back 30 years, uh, where I was overseas, and I got a chance to drive a couple of these tiny little trucks, and I fell in love with them. Um, actually, there are quite a few left-hand drive versions of these through China, uh, which a lot of people tend to forget that in China, at least, uh, everything's left-hand drive as opposed to, you know, Japan and Great Britain, what have you, being right-hand drive. And uh, it was a lot easier for me because it was left-hand drive to, to get used to these small trucks. But even with my diminutive size, I am nowhere near as tall as Andre or Roman. Uh, I'm six one, and I still bumped and did a few things. And Unfortunately, my legs got like really cramped driving it too was the other issue. Well, yeah, the, it's one thing to drive it around the ranch for half an hour. It's another thing to drive it for several hours, right? Right. And um, so that's what I did. I drove it around David's ranch and I was just shocked how easy it is to, I mean, it's an older vehicle, yeah. but half a turn of a key, the engine fires up. It's basically a 660 cc Little three cylinder yeah. motor. There we we have uh, motorcycles at like TFL that are, are, are larger, larger displacement. <laughs> yeah, but this is a K kind of a segment of mm -hmm. vehicles in Japan, which they're regulated on size, engine size as wheelbase well, wheelbase and all that Wheelbase yeah. and also capability in some ways. Yep. Um, but uh, David also fell in love with it. He almost wanted to buy it from us immediately. And I said, no, because we still need it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for certain videos. Yeah, we have a whole video series coming out where this will be one of the stars. Uh, a couple things. First yeah. of all, um, what a lot of people are beginning to discover is that 
the if you look at side by sides, even used ones, they are ridiculously expensive. Even the ones that are built specifically for the ranch. So buying something like this makes a lot more sense. Also, for those of you who want to get a little off roader, and perhaps it's really hard to find a Suzuki Samurai. You can get something like this, which has essentially the same footprint, or in some cases even smaller, and you can get a really good little off-roading vehicle. Yeah, I mean these things aren't going to really take on a Bronco Raptor, but well, it doesn't have a lot of clearance. No, but that can be fixed. They can. They yeah. actually have people who modify them and make them really capable off-road, and they have a lot of potential. Yeah, so if you're curious about this, a little pickup, we have a video, check out oldtfl.com, mm -hmm. and also our off-road channel, TFL Off-Road. Uh, we did work at the ranch with this little pickup, and you can see more about that. That is correct, Amundo. Should we move on to something else? Yes, so um, we were talking about that small truck series that's coming up, another one that will be in there. Uh, we're not going to give too much away about it, but it is a 1999 Dodge Dakota that we bought for 7000 Actually. Isn't this the first Dakota that TFL has ever purchased? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah, we bought it for $7,900. Now, we've done videos with uh, older Dakotas before. Both Andre and I love Dakotas. Um, it's it's one of those things where every once in a while we'll think, mm, hey, maybe we should get this one that we found you know, in Auto Trader or whatever. And then at the last minute, our wives throw things at us and say, no, don't do it. Um, this particular Dakota is rather unique because it is rear drive. It has a very large displacement for its size, 5.9 liter mm -hmm. V8, um, and it is. It been, sounds incredible. It, it actually sounds really good, but it, it has been slightly modified. Yeah, and it's also got a short bed, two door, short cab, so it's a really a miniature version of a Dakota. Yeah, it's tiny. but it's got a giant engine, like you said, and also it's a lot of yellow color. <laughs> it's everywhere. The wheels, the 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 brake rotor covers are yellow. Yeah, the fake uh, disc brake rotor covers are painted yellow as well, which is fascinating. Uh, it has stripes on it because it needs it. It has a spoiler in the bed. It's got on, flames inside of it. It flames on the inside. It's not on fire. <laughs> Although it could be because that vehicle runs El Fuego. It is quick-ish. Yes. Uh, um, and uh, another thing that it has are these aftermarket uh, race seats, which aren't really race seats, by the way. Uh, that are in there, and they are built specifically to work like a boa constrictor with anybody who is over 200 pounds, and they will suck the life out of you as you try to sit in them and shove your kidneys out through your chest. Which is why I think Roman selected this truck for you, uh, my friend. Yeah. We're, because we're, he loves you very, very much. <laughs> this is revenge. We're not 100% sure who gets what, by the way. And, and once yeah, again, we're not settled on And this. we're not going to go into details about that series because we still haven't shot the series yet. And we honestly don't know which direction it's going to go into. But anyway, that Dakota will be in that series. And yes, stay tuned for that. That series will probably be shot within the next three or four months. Yeah. Maybe and, less. And actually published within the next three or four months. Yeah. All right. Next on the list is a 2008 Toyota Tundra. This is a big 5.7 V8. You've seen this truck already if you follow TFL. We've done five episodes with this on our cheap truck series. Well, we've, we've done other videos with it too. Like two yeah, other, we, we have. Two or yeah. three other videos. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I haven't really done with it is... Um, like done an Ike with it because it does have 220,000 miles on the clock. And for many other reasons, um, it didn't happen. Yeah. It, but it, and we wanted it to, but it just couldn't. But we bought it for $10,000, which I thought was a deal, actually a steal. Considering how good it actually performed, yes. Yeah. And um, so once again, this is a, they call it a crew max, right? So very large four-door cab. Yeah. Shorter five and a half foot bed, uh, four by four, four wheel drive actually worked. The engine actually and the transmission. We were worried about the transmission because it was a little clunky at first. At first it was, but I think it's just it was sitting for a long time and just needed to be warmed and driven a bit. Yeah, uh, five point seven liter V eight, um, absolutely deserves its um, title of being near bu bulletproof. Uh, They're very so. well thought of. The truck itself ran, not only did it run really well, but it drove really well, even with its stock suspension and stock tires. That was one of the smoothest trucks we've bought at TFL. Would you agree? Yeah. It was a very comfortable ride. I, I think so. And it had, I mean, we changed the tires. We went to Falcons. Yeah. Uh, but even with the tires it came with, which were a little worn, and after the new tires, in both cases, it was pretty stable. And of course, a little quieter with the new tires. Yeah. The, 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 uh, but... Uh, 
I actually set to see it go. We did sell it um, already. We, by the way, the Honda and Dodge we still have. Yeah, the Tundra is gone now. It, it's fulfilled its purpose. Uh, we did the series, the cheap truck series or cheap Toyota truck series with it. Um, and honestly speaking, had I not purchased a year before that little uh, Santa Cruz, I would have probably bought this off the studios and driven it daily. It was that good. It was surprisingly good. Uh, it needed, still needed work. Don't get me wrong, but it was a really well, good. We had faded paint, you know, some other issues. The, the front bumper um, area, all of that needed to be. We replaced. did spend about ooh wow, almost two grand on fixes because it had an airbag sensor yeah, that, that was missing or mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. So that cost us a pretty penny. That was expensive. And, and then also, what did we fix? I mean, the front bumper was kind of falling off. But that was just uh, a, that was a small thing. Yeah. I can't. Sorry. I, I tried to remember. We didn't do anything with the suspension. That was fine. Nope, not the engine and transmission. And you totally took care of those steps and turned them into sliders. Yeah, I, I bent the steps a little bit. A lot. So anyways, so I, I also missed this truck. I wish we did not sell it. I wish I could buy it for myself, but I have nowhere to park it. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, the owner of it, it, you got a good truck. That thing was just so damn solid. Let's move on to the next one, though, because... Well, this is insane. First of all, some of you may be pointing and yelling at the screen when we say it and say, no, 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 that's not a truck. And we say, yeah, 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 it is. And that is a 1915 Model T that we purchased for $13,000. Did you say 1915? 1915, 1915. So basically uh, a year or two older than Roman. And this vehicle, <laughs> okay, now before you go start the screaming, there was a pickup truck version of the T, by the way, but we're not going to go there. This one simply has a full frame has a solid rear axle, already well into the world of qualifying to be a truck. And then in addition, it does have a little pickup truck bed sort of in the back. Yeah, and I, you're absolutely right. Um, it was one of the first actual pickups, right? Because you could convert it into a pickup. Right. And actually, uh, I was recently watching, um, you know this fellow Jay Leno? Uh, is he the co comedian <laughs> guy who likes cars occasionally? Yes. Or is he the car guy who's a comedian? Sorry, that was that was a bad joke. It was terrible, sorry. but I tried to help. Sorry, uh, sorry. Um, he recently mentioned he was reviewing the Cybertruck, right, mm -hmm. with uh, some of the Tesla folks. Yeah, and he did bring this point up that before you could convert your older vehicles like the Model T, you could make it into a passenger vehicle, mm -hmm. and with a few you know bolts and a few things, you could actually put add a bed to it and convert it. That's where the term, according to Jay, pick up. Because you can pick up a cargo bed, you can insert it onto our truck, hence pick up. So I thought it was kind of clever. For a multi-multi-millionaire, I'm not going to argue with him. I mean, yeah. It may, he must know what he's talking about. Um, I always thought it was just, you know, because when you were cool, you would drive something that you could pick up friends with. Or pick up your friend's couches with. Yeah, or something like that. Or whatever. Uh, the, the, the point is, is that he's probably right. But um, this vehicle is... By all intents and purposes, a truck. Yes. So this was really a brainchild of Roman and Tommy. And actually Tommy, because Tommy is an old soul. He is. Right? I mean, he really appreciates history. And I, I love that about Tommy. When he came out um, of the womb, he was already in his 60s. Yes. And uh, so uh, the point for him is to preserving this history, because it is history. Yeah. And it's actually a functioning vehicle. Ish. Uh, ish. <laughs> uh, we did drive it onto the trailer and then we took it to our ranch, and then we did drive it on our ranch, but now it's overheating. So it needs a little bit of work. Yep, yep. Maybe Volkswagen had it right with air-cooled uh, powertrains. The cool thing about this is that it's also got just a lot of components on it that are just kind of hark back to a totally different time uh, where you'd place the oil and a little toolkit and everything else on there. It was just... It's cool to see because back in those days, you couldn't just pull up to your local garage and have it fixed. Sometimes you had to take care of it more than often than not on your own. Yeah, and the simplicity of this machine is amazing. Oh, yeah. You know, you could open up the little, you know, hood flap on the side. You could look at the suspension. Everything is visible because there is not much there. Um, and you could actually see. You could follow the radiator. You could follow the, you know, the fuel little manual choke that you pull yeah, out. and actually see it function. Yeah, and they can actually learn about mechanics, mm -hmm. you know, actually appreciate it. And hopefully, I mean, Tommy is really busy, but I'm hoping that him and maybe you know, we can help him gets it, you know, not overheating again and then gets it on the road. Or we could 
chop it, channel it, and throw a V8 in it and turn it into a proper tea bucket and have some fun. Oh, Although oh. Tommy would probably freak uh, out if I even mentioned that. Yeah, he might freak out because he really wants to preserve this one. Yeah. Okay. That's why it was kind of expensive. Well, yeah. I don't know what the market is, but 13000 for a Model T. $13,000 for a vehicle that's over 100 years old yes. that runs and looks as good as that one so does. That's a that's good investment. Good. If you yeah, bought it in 1915 so. for what, 500 bucks or mm. 600 bucks? Something like, or 200 bucks, I think. I, they were. This uh, is a good investment, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Now, let's move on to another vehicle that may or may not have been a good investment, <laughs> considering that we lost our shirt on it selling it. And that is a 1997 Ford F250 FOB. OBS. OBS. Well, <laughs> power Stroke. It was one, one of the first Power Strokes. I mean, the generation of the Power yeah. Stroke. Yeah. Um, I, and the guys were, you were enamored with it. I know you liked I, it quite a bit. I, I really didn't, I didn't well, feel it. Well, so really Alex and Case fell immediately in love with it. Yeah, they liked the, it. The first moment they saw it. But I think that also has to do with the macho sound this truck makes because this truck is loud. It's bold. Of course, this is pre-def, mm -hmm. so there's no diesel exhaust fluid to even think of. Right. Um, and it's also a V8 that, you know, has proven to be relatively reliable um, over this, what, decades, several decades. Wh wh why are you not happy? Because we spent extra money on it. Okay, so we bought it, uh, <coughs> early, uh, we bought it, what, in the middle of 2023, uh, still at near the height of, COVID market, I would say. Yeah. And by that, I mean everything was expensive during yeah. COVID. True. You know, old trucks, new trucks, used vehicles, all kinds of stuff. So we bought it at 17000 bucks, mm -hmm. which is probably was a little high. And then what did we do to it? Because uh, something failed. The clutch may have failed. May have. It did. Yes. And we spent money on that. Yeah, that was a couple grand. Yeah. And, and, and then it was fine. Mm hmm we did a night gauntlet with it. Yeah. I, 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 Kent loved it too, Mr. Truck. Of course he did because it reminded him of a slightly well, younger Kent. Yeah, because he used to actually work at the Ford dealership back then, mm -hmm. actually selling these puppies brand new. Right. And uh, this truck wasn't exactly stock, which I think may have been part of the problem, is that it uh, already had some mods, and that in itself may have contributed to some of the issues that it had. Uh, n in my mind... Really, you guys just didn't seem to like it very much. Um, well, we were relatively successful with some of I would our say videos. relatively Not successful. Not wildly successful no. like we hoped. Yeah. Um, and, but, and by the way, that is one of the reasons why we get rid of these things, in some cases quicker than others. If you guys aren't clicking on the videos and showing interest, then we get rid of them because we want to move on to something that you will click on. And that is one of the reasons why the Ford didn't last that long with us. In addition... When we sold it, we lost uh, we lost our shirt. Well, not our shirt, but we definitely lost a good chunk of dough on it. Yeah, and also uh, we did. Um, I'm just going down memory lane here. We did a little MPG loop with it because I really wanted to see. Even though the truck was a little bit lifted, like you said, mm -hmm. um, what is a you know pre def truck like this actually get on the highway? So right. we did some MPG testing. We did um, towing testing, which actually pushed this baby to the limit. I I, th I think. And I'm guilty of this. I think I forget. This is only 25 years ago, this truck. But towing something that I would consider light by today, today's standards, this heavy-duty diesel was actually struggling with a little bit. It was being put to the test. Yes. So right now, an F-150 would tow the same trailer without even scuffing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then this heavy-duty diesel was actually having small problems with it while towing. Exactly. So that's how far we progressed in the last 20 years. I will admit, it was a good-looking truck. Uh, yeah. Those square bodies, I think, are, are great to look at. I, I just felt that its performance let it down a little bit, and that, you know, I just didn't think that you guys were all that interested in it. And inevitably, we got rid of it. We lost a couple thousand on it, uh, not to mention what we spent on the clutch. So it, it kind of hurt. Yeah. Right? So Yes, it did. Um, so next on our list is a uh, truck that I think you and I both loved. We adored this little guy. 2019 yeah. Ford Ranger. Uh, the Ford Ranger is sort of an unsung hero. and un uh, 
Andre and I were really bummed that it w left as quickly as it did because we wanted we had more tests in mind, didn't we? Yeah, and sometimes you and I don't have, make every decision here. <laughs> no. Well, actually, not a lot of decisions. <laughs> not a lot of decisions, but right? When it comes to money, uh, you know, our boss makes a lot of decisions, of right. course. Uh, and it did leave us before I was ready. I was yeah. sad. Yeah, I was sad too because the, the more I drove it, the more I liked it. The powertrain, I'm, I'm not thrilled with the interior. I, I still think it's a very cheap interior, and I know that the new one's coming eventually. It's one of these damn days, and that'll take care of a lot of those problems. But it was very capable, and in its class, one of the best towing little trucks I've driven ever. Yes. It was that good. Very good towing little truck, which is the whole point, right? You know, buy a little truck like this, you want to be able to tow, and it tows great. Um did not make money on it at all. No, and so here's the other thing. This was also the like a year ago, mm -hmm. so December of 2022. Right. And, of course, we're talking about it because we owned it in 2023. Um, and this was, once again, COVID money. Yep. I mean, this market was hot. Every pickup truck was being swooped up. Uh, we actually got it at a local dealership, mm -hmm. and we paid, I cannot believe this, for a used Ranger we paid $37,603. And 77 cents. And I want to say something about that. Uh, we got robbed. We did. Uh, but we loved this little guy. We loved it. But we, we, I looked around at other prices. The minute I hear when Roman says he bought something, I'll immediately go and look at various other places where um, you know, the same vehicle is for sale and make fun of him because he overspent, which he often does. And in this case, he did. And even though it was COVID money. And also low mileage. Yeah, it Don't did forget. have low mileage. Yeah, that was very, that was very low miles. Now, bear in mind that while we had it, which was a very limited amount of time, we did put a little stripes kit on it, which was kind of a 70s retro yeah. thing. I thought it looked kind of cool. It was different. Um, not every, but not all of you guys liked it. I remember seeing some of your comments. But just a great little truck. And unfortunately, we lost, uh, wow, <laughs> we lost about $8,000 on it when we sold it. No way. But I think it had to feed another vehicle that Roman wanted. So that was the bottom line. Yeah. When we did sell it, it the money immediately went into the next vehicle that Roman bought. Yeah, and bear in so, mind, uh, and this is something that should be mentioned, I, we, we, we like to be tri uh, transparent here. One of the reasons why we buy and sell in s at, uh, some unusual times is for tax reasons. So we have to keep in mind yeah, we are a small company, yeah. and we really do have to maintain that. If we don't, then we're just going to lose our shirts on everything. Yeah, so I, I wish I would have kept it a little bit longer. I wanted to do a little bit more testing. But another point about this older Ranger, because the new one is coming, um, it just was honest worker. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes... I, I know it exactly what you're saying. So, sometimes you, you buy a vehicle, you're like, you know what? You know, it's an FX4, so it's got some off-road capability. Mm -hmm. I know that. But will it tow a heavy trailer? And sometimes you're not sure. But this guy didn't care. He towed heavy... No matter where we went. It actually outperformed the next vehicle on our list. And the next vehicle <laughs> on our list, I think that Andre and I would agree, was also a very hard, honest worker. Yes. Um, and that vehicle was the 2022 Ram 1500 Classic, otherwise known as Stubby. Yeah, Stubby. And man, did we love Stubby. Roman liked Stubby quite a bit as well. Now, I think he shed a tear when it was gone. I, I Most of us were like trying to think of ways to keep it and a reason why we should keep it. Um, and unfortunately, there were a couple problems. First of all, Stubby was built on the Classics platform. So that platform is an old platform, right? It's not the new RAM, technically. It's an old RAM, even though it was a 2022. Also, it's a they very... They still build it, actually. <laughs> no, they yes. still have that line open. I think they get rid of it next year, supposedly. Yeah. Um, that RAM was very rare because it was the short bed, short wheelbase, standards uh, cab, and it was four-wheel drive. And Roman scoured the universe to find this thing uh, an acceptable one price-wise. Yeah, and I think we were um, specifically on a mission, Roman was in, and we were, to find the most affordable 4x4 full-size pickup in the country. And we did. And you guys argued with us in the comments a lot because oh you said $39,000 for this guy is not the least amount of money. Which you'd be correct if it was a two-wheel drive. But here's the thing. Uh, here, I, I need to jab some dealerships here. Go get them. Because you go on any search engine, right, for mm -hmm. automotive, right, new vehicles, and here comes a full page of ads for, 
here, buy this RAM at $32,000. Here, buy this RAM at $33,000. And then you call them and you get either one of two answers. Oh, I'm sorry. I just sold it. Mm -hmm. But would you like another one for 50 grand, right? <laughs> yes. Or um, somehow, you know, it's either unavailable or we just added something to it. So now it's more expensive, right? Yeah. So it's never the truth. Almost never. It's interesting you mentioned that there's actually legislation that's uh, going to be pa or may be passed, I should say, that uh, stops that practice of bait and switch. Um, and it can actually, you would have be empowered as the buyer to go to uh, the government and say, basically, look what these guys have done, and they can be fined for it and possibly more in the future. This is something that is in the process of going through the books. But there uh, are, of course, nice, you know, really, you know, morally good you know, dealerships and, you know, businesses I'd out say there. about one out of every 10 is, is you know, good guys. And yeah. we've talked about it, especially through COVID, ad nauseum, about prices that were being jacked or bait and switch and all these other things. So we had to go find, where was this, in Ohio? No, this is Idaho. Idaho. Idaho, yes. Yeah. So we found a great one. It is what, you know, when it was advertised, it is what they advertised. Exactly. They had it on the lot. Roman and Tommy flew out, and they actually picked it up. I think you could technically get one for about a, a fifteen hundred bucks less, but ours had a couple of little packages on it, right? Yeah, and unfortunately, once again, because our search was so difficult, right, we did not get the correct rear axle. Mm -hmm. uh, it came with a three twenty one rear differential, which is really good for around town driving, and mm -hmm. it's efficient. Yeah, this it's, way, it's efficient. Yeah, we, you and I tested it many times. Yeah, I think it was a pretty efficient little truck. Yeah. But it doesn't tow a lot because of this. No, it didn't like to tow a lot at all. In fact, I think it was under 5,000 pounds. It was like 47 or 4,800 pounds, which is really like almost Santa Cruz territory. I mean, it's it is really, Santa Cruz territory yeah. if you get the turbo. Um, so I know a lot of you guys were like, well, that's not really a full size truck. No, it is. It had a full size truck frame, it had a full size truck bed. And even though it had the and Pentastar four -wheel drive. and four wheel drive, and even though it had the Pentastar V6, and sure, there are plenty of <laughs> mid-sized trucks that outperformed this thing. It was still classified as a full-size truck. And we did a lot with it. We did everything from doing a fake little business venture, which many of you did not like, um, where we covered it with doggy poo stickers, yes. to taking it to Moab, Utah. We towed with it. We tried to load a uh, Fiat 500 into the bed of it, I believe. Yes. Uh, we, <laughs> we did so much with this thing. We kept it for a year. And we loved it because it was not only a very capable, just good studio truck, but it was a very reliable daily driver and it was comfortable to drive. And because we did so many videos and most of these videos were very successful, I think this was kind of a home run for us. I agree 100%. Because, you know, we make most of our revenue actually from little tiny ads that you guys are watching or skipping mm -hmm. <laughs> during skipping our videos. That. I don't like uh, it. But... It was successful, and we did sell it for less, of yeah, course. But I think this is one of the rare cases where we made back our money based on the fact that this truck did so many videos, and that return in itself, I think, helped. Yeah, yeah. so that was huge this year. What a great little truck that was. I missed, See, I missed that one as much as I missed the Ford, if not maybe even a little bit more. I just, because and, it was and always... The, and the Tundra, maybe. What about, uh, where does the Tundra stack up here? Yeah, that's, well, see, the Tundra... The, but it's used. Yeah, really used. Yes. The Ford was almost brand new. The, the Ram was brand new. Yes. The Tundra was extremely used and lived <laughs> an entirely different life where it was being abused in, yes. what was it? Uh, in New Mexico. New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, that poor thing probably was never put into four-wheel drive. Uh, that went through a lot. Now, speaking of four-wheel drive, we shall move on to... Oh, boy. The, the bonus round where you're paying triple for a truck that's not worth it. Um, in this case, let's start off with the 2023 Ford F-150 Raptor R, R for ridiculously expensive. So, yeah. So a little backstory here. Please. Um, we are competitive at TFL Studios, as you know. Oh, hell yeah, we are. Uh, because, I mean, you are competitive. I'm Roman. is com all, all of us, us are. All of us individually are competitive. And the whole company, we want to you know push it forward. So we've been on this bender where we try to buy highly um, you know, high stature vehicles first. Mm -hmm. Just look at what we did over the last few years, uh, where 
We had, you know, the TRX first. Right. We've had three Raptors, regular Raptors. This was our third this Raptor. Is our, this is yes. our third Raptor. Um, we had the TRX. We were first delivery of the TRX. Very first. Um, we had one of the first Rebels, Rem Rebels yep. as well. Um, is it, we had this, One of the first Tundras. Yes, one of the first Tundras. We also were one of the first to get the Chevy Silverado with the uh, ZR2 package. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, I mean, we were really early yeah. on with that one. So so we are kind of... That's, that's how we... When it's fresh and new, that's when we think we have a chance to make good videos and good money from our videos. That's exactly it. So, so that's the backstory. Now, what so exactly? Now, so the Raptor R, why did we put out $113,801.99 in order well, to buy this thing? Well, because that's what the, the sticker price was. Right. So this wasn't, <laughs> this was actually at, you know, this was what it was, uh, MSRP. Yeah, uh, we weren't paying above sticker yeah, or anything because else. a lot we of don't them are that. still being upcharged. Yeah, they stay oh, big time, big yes. time. Yes, um, and the Raptor R. Well, really, what makes it worthwhile is the fact that it is so incredibly powerful. Essentially, it's a, it's a Raptor thirty seven, right? Um, but it's that engine. It's that engine that really makes it what it is. Plus, there's a couple other little bits here and there, but for the most part, it's the engine, and it is remarkably powerful. It is definitely one of the faster pickup trucks we've ever driven, uh, at least with a gas engine. And it was it was remarkable. But one interesting thing about that truck is after we made about a half dozen videos, you guys started waning with your interest. Less and less clicks were noticeable. That is true. We did have some very successful videos. For example, I'm looking at this off-road video Roman and I did, which was a comparison using this truck as well. That was quite successful. Almost half a million mm -hmm. viewers on that one. And we, said we had uh, several other quite successful videos. By the way, we also do these little wrap-ups or little updates. We call them long-term update. And you guys hate that word because you're saying that six months is not long-term. But for us, it is. Yeah, um, we have no choice. We Once again, we, if we you can't can, wait 10 years for this. Unless you guys are constantly like clicking, oh my God, I want to learn more about this. The minute it starts to essentially lose money, we got to get rid of it and move on to the next one. And also bear in mind, in order for us to actually buy another vehicle, let's say, oh, I don't know, a Hummer, um, we have to sell these other vehicles in order to have that money in our bank in order to purchase another vehicle. We're not just putting this in our pockets and going off and hanging out at the beach, although I'd really like to. Um, so that's one of the reasons why these things have to be sold off in many cases after six months. But there have been a few vehicles where we've held on to them for over a year. The TRX is a really good example. Yeah, almost a year and a half we had the TRX. That thing was was crazy popular all the way up until the end. Um, and it also proved to be a very good studio truck, but it's not on this list because it was from over a year ago. Yeah. And by the way, um, we are always open. You know, if we have issues with some of these long-term vehicles, we talk about them and show them. Yep. And the TRX you mentioned was really solid. We've talked about this before. Solid as a rock. No problems. Um, by the way, Stubby was also solid. Mm -hmm. um, this Raptor R was also, we, we didn't have uh, really any hitches with this. No, no, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember any. And it was interesting because driving that off-road versus driving the TRX off-road, just a real quick summary on my behalf, uh, it, it was like the difference between driving a sledgehammer off-road versus driving a samurai sword. Uh, one is, you know, they both do the same thing. They're built to kill, but one is a little bit more elegant, and that would be the Ford, the way it drove, versus the TRX, which just wanted to blow through stuff. Very different mentality on both trucks. Yeah, and I think it partially has to do with the character of the engine. Yep. And also the actual curb weight, because the Raptor R, because it is all aluminum body, and yep. Ford has invested billions into this over the last, what, 10 years. Yep. Um, because of the aluminum structures and all that stuff, it actually weighed about what four to four hundred pounds between, or maybe even four hundred fifty pounds less than a comparable TRX, which yep. is a big chunk of weight. That is a massive chunk of weight, which may not make a lot of difference in straight line performance, but makes a huge bit of difference in off road handling and handling in general. So, yeah, very different types of trucks. Uh, I, I miss them both very much, but. With the Ford, once again, you know, once you guys lost interest, we got rid of it. Yeah. There's a little bit of news that just came out this week. So this is a little bit of truck news, okay? Uh -huh. So I'm going to interrupt this list. By all means. Um, just, uh, what, a few hours ago, Ford has dropped uh, the 2024 Ford F-150 Raptor R power numbers. Because we talked about this engine. It's a 5.2 liter supercharged uh, Predator. That's the nickname. Uh -huh. V8. And 700 horsepower was the old rating. Yeah, it was like 701 or something, right? 
Well, yes. no, it was all 700. Exactly seven. Uh-huh. But people had an issue, including me, because the TRX engine was 702. That was so different. why, why two horsepower difference? Right. You know? but they answered it this year. Um, so the trucks that will be on sale just in a couple months, the new Raptor R's, because they have new suspension. The Fox shocks have been updated with dual valves, controllable. Uh huh. The power number is now 720 horsepower. Woo. So they bumped it 20 horses. Isn't the torque the same though? Yes. Okay. But here's the thing. I want to read the statement uh, because you would ask well, how, why? Yeah. How did do they you, do that? Yeah. What? So according, this is a, a quote from Ford. Uh, this power increase was enabled by reduced air inlet losses coupled with an optimized calibration that also results in a wider torque curve. So what does this mean? It means it, it breathes it, better. It seems like it's inhaling better mm-hmm. because they may have modified the intake system. Right. And also, of course, optimize the computer, the calibration, to work with that. And as a side effect, the torque curve is actually fatter, according to them. Which is what you want. Which is nice. Yeah. And also, it was the character of this uh, Ford engine was high rev- uh, quick revving and mm-hmm. high revving. Yeah. I've seen it at 7,000 RPM. Uh, and it gets there very fast. It's like a race car. Yeah. It just, yeah. And it, it truly it, is. Whereas in the TRX, doesn't like to rev real high. It's a very different type of and engine. And slightly slower getting up there, right? Right, right. It's a little bit larger more displacement engine. Yeah. Very different characters between the two of them. So this is good news for you guys out there who are willing to spend well over $100,000 on a again. brand new. Again. Again. <laughs> on, a, on a new but very capable pickup truck. By the way. It would be a totally different episode to talk about why these trucks are or, or are not worth that much money. But look at it this way real quick. If you're thinking about the suspension, the tires, the powertrain, everything that's on that truck, how much it would cost from, a say, $50,000 truck to work your way up there, perhaps that's one of the reasons why these numbers are so ridiculously high. Yeah, and the other piece of news from this week is the Colorado Zero Two Bison pricing was announced. Mm-hmm. And the same story, it's expensive. That bison package costs about twelve thousand bucks. Yes, on top of the already a ZR2 truck, making it a sixty thousand dollar plus midsize pickup. But just like the Raptor R and the bison on the GM side, it's been integrated and tested over months and years of time. Right. right. So it's not like you went to a shop down the alley. They gave you a bumper, you know, a shock, and you slapped it on there. This was con. Completely tested, and they also race these vehicles in the desert. Yeah, I mean they they really do their research and they they do sweat the details. But speaking of General Motors, yeah, let's close out on our most expensive vehicle to date that we purchased at TFL, and in my mind, not on everybody's, uh, one of the bigger disappointments, and that would be the 2022 Hummer EV, the truck, the yes. truck. Yep. So yes, so the, actually this one was just a little bit before the Raptor. So these are organized in terms of price. Yeah, that's why we're, um, yeah. So, so now, yeah, where do we begin? Um, well, let's so, just talk about what it, what it was purchased uh, at. Well, it, it cost us 115000 just over that. $115,184 total. Yes, but by the way, some of these big prices specifically, they don't include a local sales tax. <laughs> That's right. So I'm not. We're not even talking about that, which, which is really be, high here. In which Boulder. could be like nine percent, up to nine percent. Yeah. Which when you're spending 115, uh, you have to. Lot buckle up. You have to buckle up it's, for that one. That's pretty damn painful. But in addition, we didn't get this one bone stock either. Not that they really even come technically bone stock. I would say this one came with the spare tire kit, I believe. Yeah, actually, uh, or no, we included we, that. Later. We added that slightly later. So once again, uh, hold on, sorry, I'm trying to pull up a picture of this. Okay. Uh, but what I wanted to say is, this was one. This was the same case as the Raptor R. We wanted to be first. Yep. We didn't have a reservation, or at least an early reservation. That is correct. And uh, a nice gentleman was able to transfer. You know, we bought it together, and yada yada yada. There is a way to do it where you buy it as two entities, and then one entity during the term uh, time of sale, walks away from it officially. Yep. Right. So we did that. We thank him. The Dumb Friends League um, Animal Shelter was a benefactor of that because we talked about them, supported them. Right. Um, and then we had some issues with this vehicle. This is where uh, I where I 
began to just find that this thing, first of all, let's quickly talk about what the Hummer is. It is the most off-road capable electric vehicle that is currently on the market. I think that we could still say that, uh, at least on paper. It has the ability to, uh, it has technically a front and rear locker. Uh, the front, I think, is electric and the rear is mechanical, or is it the other way around? It's the other way around, uh, because, because the front it has one motor, mm -hmm. so hence it has a mechanical device to right. send split power, and then the rear it has two, two motors, motors, and they kind of simulate that, right, yeah, yeah, because gotcha. they have two motors. Um, and then in addition, it is technically a pickup. I mean, it does have a tiny little pickup truck bed in it. <laughs> um, it has the ability to crab walk and has four-wheel steering. Yeah. Um, good ground clearance. If you jack it all the way up, it's ridiculous ground clearance. Plus, it has one of the largest batteries available in any electric vehicle, in addition to the fact that it has incredible performance numbers from a standstill. And then... A, a thousand horsepower combined. Right, a thousand horsepower. But then... You yeah, talk but about something so, else. So, so yeah, here's, here's my take on this. This was General Motors' moonshot because they even compared it to the moon lander, right? When you open the door, there's a little map of the moon crater and there's a little, you know, boot from Armstrong, you know, stepping on the moon. Which is why they colored these early ones white and black because they kind of wanted it to look similar to what you'd drive on the moon. Yes. And... Hence, you know, they threw everything at this, mm -hmm. you know, their best engineering teams, because we know a lot of those guys. We do indeed. Uh, but they were also in a hurry. Yep. There was kind of an arms race there, right? Because Tesla announced their truck in 2019, right? Cybertruck. There was a Rivian that's coming on sale. Ford was working on the Lightning, and GM was working on this. So there was a very urgent, there was a lot of urgency there. Which may have forced them to cut a few corners or speed well, things up. And But yeah, because normal vehicle would be developed over the course of four or five years. Mm -hmm. They had to do this in under two years. Right. So that's the baseline off of which we have to work off. Now, in addition to all the goodies and gadgets and everything else that make it extremely off-road capable, and the fact that it's very unique, I mean... It has a partially removable roof. It has this amazing greenhouse in it and electronics that you wouldn't believe. However, it's also well over 9,000 pounds. That is extraordinarily heavy for something that you want to bound around off-road in, um, which is one of the many issues that this vehicle has. Now, in addition, just like any other electric vehicle, if you're left stranded, it's not like a gas car where you can throw a gallon in it real quick and have it drive up the back of a trailer and tow it out of there. As a matter of fact, you can't even drive this up on a trailer. The many trailers are not even rated <laughs> to tow the damn thing. Um, it is, in its own way, very unique, but also extremely heavy, and it also has an unusual footprint. So off-road, it's an issue, but more importantly, when we broke down, and we most certainly did, we being Roman, it created a problem. Yeah, it uh, plugged up some traffic, unfortunately. But most of the issues, I think all of them, were electrically related. I mean, I know it's an EV. Uh, it was just electronic accessories or components right. that were the issue. It wasn't like the motor failed or the battery failed. It wasn't like a big critical failure. It was like the little gremlins that were running around. But the little this. gremlins can all become a critical <laughs> failure when you become a 9,000-pound paperweight yeah. in the middle of the highway, which is exactly what happened in Roman. Now, fortunately, uh, with some extra work done by our good man Tommy, we were finally able to figure out how to open the hood on the thing. And yeah, there's to, a little um, latch. It's a little, it's not even a latch. Uh, it's a, like, a, like rope. a cable, like yeah. a cable you pull. It's a cable that's tied in like a noose, and you have to pull it way under the dash in order to pop the hood because that's the only way you can disconnect and reconnect the. Because it's an electrically volt. powered hood. Right. No, it's an electrically powered yeah. hood. So anyway, they were able to actually reboot the thing and, and get it driving again. It just needed a reboot. And then later on, it, uh, those problems were taken care of by an update. Am I correct? Yes. And then we wanted to, uh, after we did lots of testing, uh, by the way, we had lots of success with videos with this thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, barring the one that, that, you know, with the breakdown. Which was um, one of the most popular we, videos we did that year. Yes. But we did do towing. Uh, that was highly successful. Yes. We did some drag racing. That was also very successful because you guys wanted to find out. Uh, Roman and Tommy, and you weren't there on the red cone, were you? On Red Cone? No, uh, with not, the Hummer, not with the Hummer, no. You were there with the Jeep and some other vehicles. Yeah, that's right. I was there with the Defender. Um, uh, but the <laughs> I was there on the racetrack when we when we uh, launched it. and In the uh, Watts to Freedom WTF mode. That thing launches 
absolutely like a rocket. It actually, rocket. I think, moves the earth a little bit. Well, it moved the asphalt quite a bit <laughs> in ways that you don't really want it to move the asphalt. But the other part of that is it also has a, a drop-off where it, once you pass 100 and something. It's like 3. 103 years. Then it, it, yeah, then you can't accelerate it's anymore. It's limited, electrically limited. Right. Because so, of the tires. Exactly. Specifically. That. And so as you're running down the runway and going really fast, all of a sudden, these other vehicles will pass you because you've already reached your max. Yeah, so it is basically, I mean, the older H1s were just, you know, these wild vehicles for celebrities, and the new one is too. Yep. I mean, it's very expensive. Most people can't afford it. It, it turns heads. It turns, it turns heads for head. sure. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, like the Lightning almost turns no heads. Because it looks just like a regular F-150, yeah. essentially, and, and there's plenty of them out there. Yeah, but the Hummer, this one turns heads. It does. Uh, and we did sell it. So after a few months, you guys lost interest once again. Um, so we, we needed, I was, we also had a lot of money wrapped in, up into it. Right. Also, we put it on, like you mentioned, on 37s, including a tire carry. It doesn't come with a spare from the factory. I, I can't That's stand on that. Yes. Or, or there's not even an option. You know what else doesn't? It. is the new Cybertruck. It doesn't come with a built-in spare from the factory. It's going to bite them uh, in the rear. And they're recommending you tie it down in your bed. Well, yes, I could tie down a spare then tire I've in my bed. Then I suddenly lost my ability to use my bed to its fullest. Yes, exactly. It makes no sense, which is exactly what happened to us with this Hummer. Yeah. We lost the ability to use the bed as a bed, really. It was more of a storage compartment. Exactly. So so we did that. We put it on 37s, which actually filled out the whole thing and right. made it macho, macho. It was super macho. I don't think it was any better off-road with those tires. It gave it a little bit more ground clearance. We and also it, picked up some weight. We picked up even more weight. Yeah. And it also affected our range. Now, this thing was a range monster, even with its unaerodynamic build and the fact that you know it had these massive tires creating all that drag. It still was able to get well over 300 miles in terms of range. Yeah, and actually, unlike some other companies that are building electric vehicles, <clears throat> Tesla, mm. uh, it actually did what it was promising. Yep. And so the EPA ratings of 300 and some miles were actually true. We also recently tested the Silverado EV truck mm. that actually blew past the EPA ratings. Which is exactly what you really want. As yeah, you want to over-deliver, right? right? Not under-deliver exactly. on, on these things. So actually, the range was quite um, you know, quite. And it good. charges very quickly as long as you have the right charger in the right circumstance. Yeah. We actually have a video coming this week about this because we compared the Chevy Blazer EV to the Subaru Solterra EV to the... Tesla Model Y. That's right. And there were some surprises here. So <laughs> check out OTFL.com for that as well. That's right. And uh, speaking of all that, now listen, guys, any of these trucks that we had, were, was there a favorite? Was there one that you guys wanted us to hold on to? Or more importantly, <laughs> was there one where you're like, I can't stand that truck, get rid of it? We want to know in the comments below. We want to know what you think about these trucks. And look, this year, we're already starting to buy trucks for this upcoming 2024 season. Yeah, and we've announced some of them already. So That's right. We told you we are very, very hardcore on the new Tacoma. Mm -hmm. We really want to be one of the first to purchase it once again. And we will be. Be competitive mm -hmm. like we are uh, because we were one of the first with the new Tundra, and we want to do it again with the Tacoma. Uh, and... We don't have news about this to share yet. We're mm. waiting for one. Any day. So by the time yes. you see this broadcast, it we could... We may be in Texas by we, now. We may be flying out to Texas. But to, to we up. are not in Texas, nope. so we're still waiting. Also, like we mentioned, we're waiting for a Cybertruck. Right. I really, really want uh, to get a pause on it. Because, to be frank, I don't think it's been pushed in any of your... I mean... As a pickup truck, it hasn't been pushed. No. We've done, we've seen amazing drag racing with it. Amazing Tractor reviews. Tractor pulls and stuff like Tractor that. Tractor pulls, track reviews, amazing stuff. But I actually want to see it towing up a mountain and or traversing rock fields. We, we want to test it. Yet. That is correct. We want, and I'm instead of being Frank, I'm going to be Nathan. Whoa. So to be Nathan. Uh, I'm making fun of you, buddy. I am. Uh, but we want to test it the TFL way. So the way our studios tests trucks, we do the gaunt, I, uh, the gaunt I click. 
That's what I was about to say. No, this is the name you created. I know, the iGauntlet. Yes. We want to test it on the off-road trails that we're familiar with. We want to put it on rollers. We want to do everything with this truck that we would do with other pickup trucks. That way you guys, as the consumer, have a concise idea of, okay, this can perform this way against A, B, C, and D. And we already have a huge portfolio of trucks that we've tested over the years, and we'll add this to that. And as such, you guys will have the most informed uh bit of information on this and, truck ever. And also compare it to what we've done in the past. That's a right. point. Like we've tested like the Hummer, like we just talked about yeah. on the range test yep. and I gauntlets and all this stuff. And then we can compare it apples for apples, how the Cybertruck does. By the way, the Cybertruck will cost us about the same amount because the the foundation or founder series Cybertruck, Cyber Beast is 120,000. But that's not the one with the extra battery in the bed, right? No, no, this is not an extended range battery it's it's the cyber beast version and why are we not pushing for the extended range battery well first of all it's like supposed to cost an additional sixteen thousand bucks that's part of it but also you lose bed space and also gain weight you gain weight and you lose around a third of your bed space and the whole purpose no 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 we don't want that exactly we want to test the truck as a truck so we want to take it to david's ranch and throw a thing of uh wheat or wheat hay in the back well where's my head uh, we want to be able or to wait. I don't care. I guess it could be whatever. But yeah. we have we want to use it as an actual truck. And I know that many of you guys, especially Tesserati fans, are going to be like, "Well, wait a minute. Most people who buy this are just into cars, and they want kind of a pickup truck." Yeah, we get that. But that's not what we're here for. No, we're because here. it's it's it was presented by Tesla as a replacement for a pickup truck. Bingo. And we want to test it as such. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay, guys, uh, with all that Sorry. information, no, 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 I think we <laughs> there's were... There's a little passion there. There's a lot of passion there, but there's a lot of information out there that I'm sure you guys are very curious about, and we will be covering in the 2024 season with all these new trucks, we will be buying and borrowing and wrecking and, and hoping selling. and selling in some cases. Yeah. And that will be coming, well, it's already happening right now, basically. Yeah, once again, thanks for joining us. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, which is just about as you're, as watching, you're watching this, this podcast. Yeah, right. So we really appreciate your support. Once again, on Patreon, uh, we'll see you next week. We're not going to stop the podcast. We're not stopping the podcast uh, for nothing. No, we're, we're going to keep going next week and beyond. All right. Take care, guys. Take care, guys.